Just a quick reminder to let you know that most of the Men Are Good content is going to be at Locals. You can go right up there in the corner and click a link that will help you get on there. And it's free. Come on and join us. And uh, I think you're going to like this one. We'll see where we go. Can we get started? Men are good, as are you. Yes, men are indeed good, and as are you. And I'm here today with Don Tom Golden. I'm here today with Janice Fiamingo, the creator of Fiamingo File 1 and Fiamingo File 2.0. If you haven't seen 2.0, you need to have a look at it. It is fascinating, all about the old feminists and what they do and how they're so similar to the new ones. Anyway, <laughs> we'll have a link below that you can go straight to that. It's it's a playlist. It's numerous videos, well worth watching. And we have Don Lafondel with us also. And Don is a presenter from ICMI, a lawyer with many decades experience. Privacy law, I think, Don, was your expertise. Is that right? Yeah, that was my main area of practice. Yeah, but yes. more importantly, Don is um, a very acute observer of men's issues. So we're glad to have him here today. It's Janice and Don. It's a a great pair of uh, men's advocates, and I'm proud to be with you both. Anyway, so today, um, Janice, is it okay if I start now? No. Don, is it okay yes. if I start? Oh, okay. uh, well, um, maybe uh, I'll, I think I'll decide afterwards. <laughs> yeah. oh, That's it. That's exactly <laughs> it. Anyway, we're going to talk about consent today. And you just saw how asking for consent can foul things up. <laughs> and think about something as sensitive and subtle as sex. Asking consent in a sexual experience. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so consent. Where do we go with all this, guys? Where do we start? Yes, consent. I mean, I think you just summed it up right there. <laughs> uh, it is such an artificial concept and yet I would say that, um, you know, even more than abortion, which we talked about a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. consent has become, uh, it, it has assumed sacramental importance to the feminist movement. Yeah. And I think that's because the discussion of consent and then all the related issues around sexual coercion and sexual assault and, you know, everything else that goes along with that, it really allows um, feminists to um, drive home this idea of male sexual predation that that becomes central to all discussions of male-female relations. Female sexual vulnerability also becomes central. And it, the purpose, obviously, is to continue to drive a wedge between men and women, to, to um, weaken, disastrously weaken the pair bond between yes. men and women, the sexual pair bond that is central to any sane society. And so, um, I mean, there's so many things to talk about. It, to me... Um, the this issue of consent, especially now the move from yes means yes and no means no, which was already deeply problematic, as I hope we can talk about, because often yes doesn't mean yes and no doesn't mean no. Well, right. especially no, no doesn't mean no. Um, but now to this notion of affirmative consent, which we can talk about in a little bit more detail later, but which is now being applied in various jurisdictions, including in Canada and certain states, in the adjudication of sexual assault claims on university campuses. The idea that the man, and it's always the man, must obtain consent, affirmative consent, must, must uh, achieve a yes to every stage of the sexual encounter. It is on the one hand, deeply insulting to men, I believe, yes. it, implying always that men are quite happy or even prefer to have sex with unwilling partners, which is an outrageous slander on men. Uh, it, uh, it creates a completely unrealistic standard that doesn't apply in probably 99.9% .9 of all actual in sexual and romantic interactions. And, um, oh, obviously it, it also just, it, it, it has achieved the empowerment of women to, to control the meaning of every sexual interaction and to have an inordinate power over the legal consequences for men that is just extremely dangerous in our society. So uh, those are some of the things that, that I yeah. find just 
uh, so so shocking about uh, where feminist ideology has gone with consent. I would add one more thing to that, and that is a great group of, of ideas, Janice. But the one I would add is it also infantilizes women. Yes. And it, it presumes that they can't say no. Mm-hmm. What the hell? Yeah. I mean, guys know what no means. Yeah. At least I did when I was growing up in the 50s and 60s and the early well, 70s. I- I I absolutely agree. You know, it is so ridiculous that feminism, which kept has kept on claiming that feminism is the radical idea that women are human, uh, or <laughs> you know, and 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 that claimed that in, in the nineteen sixties and and nineteen seventies that women wanted to be free of sexual stereotypes and of all sorts of rules that they wanted to be able to make their own decisions, be autonomous, take control over their own sexuality and their own choices, now pretends that adult women cannot even know what they want and have not the agency to be able to say no when they feel like they want to say no. Yeah, I mean, if, yeah. if it is true, if that is really the case, then feminists should just admit that the entire feminist movement was a very bad experiment and we should go back to the days when you had to be chaperoned and that any woman who went out on her own with a man was essentially uh, acknowledging that she was some kind of disreputable person to be condemned because it is such a ridiculous claim about adult women that they can't say no. Yes, I agree. Man, yeah, I could, couldn't agree with that more. The, um, I always say so many interesting things, Janice, these, Mm -hmm. um, the, um, idea that an adult woman or even a teenager, like when I, when I was young, teenagers could say no, like they really meant it. Yeah. The idea that women are equally capable of and ought to be in all positions of power and authority, at least in equal numbers to men, but on the other hand, can't say no like they mean it, <laughs> right? Yeah. Means that on the right side, they're through the roof, but on the responsibility side, not only is that not equal, that's not adult. That's mm-hmm. not adult. And it does remind me, if I can go off on a quick tangent of, you know, the legal theory I developed over the years, one part of it is that there was a kind of equality between men and women in the past. Men had sure had dominant rights, you might say, to be the ones eligible for the best jobs, but they also took all the responsibility of supporting the family. And, uh, and uh, women, if they were married, had the responsibility to raise the kids, but had the right to raise the kids also and a right to be supported and all that. What feminism has done in all areas, like in general, but specifically on sex, is swap out traditional female responsibility for traditional male rights. So now women have a double share of rights and absolutely... Yes very few responsibilities and men have a double share of responsibilities and almost no rights. And yeah. this is a, this is an example of that. It sure is. Yeah. I, I was rereading the Canadian criminal code and its definition of what counts as rape. And one of the things that the criminal code is very clear on is that the accused's responsibility is not in any way diminished by his voluntarily making himself drunk. But of course, as we know, and it's not stated in the criminal code definition, as we know that when when the woman voluntarily makes herself drunk, she therefore is exempted from all responsibility. So even if she says enthusiastically, yes, 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 that no longer counts. And what it means of course, is that she is free from prosecution uh, for you know raping the man there's never any any talk yeah. of that but he is now liable to be prosecuted no matter what she said or did because she can then later claim and and it will be claimed in law by the prosecution that she was not capable of giving consent so i mean it, it wow it 
Exactly right. And there's so, there's so again, so many things there. There's, uh, first of all, maybe things have changed somewhat, but, you know, when I was young, uh, or even when I was a little bit older, nobody wanted to have a big discussion when you're in the middle of starting a sexual encounter. It's really? just, yeah. And like the one time we don't need rationality, like from uh, each other, and men would long for rationality from men most of the time. <laughs> this is way too emotional and way, you know, sex is, and way too uh, um, uh, oh. arousing. Like, But they want like an almost arithmetic uh, precision uh, of consent that just doesn't exist in that context. And one of the things that astounds me most um, is that uh, you might recall Fred uh, Hayward, who was in the red pill back in the day. He used to say, it's not that women can't say no when they mean no, it's that they can't say yes or won't say yes when they mean yes, which means that, you know, men had to figure out which no's were no and which might not be so firm. Uh, But so what they've done, it seems to me, they said is, what's the most likely thing you can rely on in a sexual encounter? Well, people's physical reaction, body language, facial expressions. So they say, okay, let's say that doesn't count. Um, Let's say it all has to be verbal. Uh, What don't women like to do? We could have them say no means no, and we did that for a while. But, you know, it would be worse if we said they had to say yes, because a lot of women, in this, even in this day and age, certainly in my day and age, don't like to say yes. They just don't want to do it. Uh, they just kind of want things to unflow in some sort of natural way. I'm sure it's a lot different than when I was young, but there's still some of it there. In fact, I had read a, um, uh, an article in the last couple of years, that 25% of U.S. high school girls admitted they had said no when they didn't mean it. That's 25%, oh. not out of high school yet, and those are the ones that, that admitted it. So it seems to me what they've done, they've now said, okay, let's take the most unrealistic, unnatural, unlikely to be obtained standard of uh, yes means yes, or you have to get this verbalized yes. And then they say, it's like they say, what? Well, what else can we do? Well, let's see. Let's say it has to be enthusiastic. Are they crazy? <laughs> like, you know, like, no. yes. Like, who's, what woman's going to do that? I think they would find that a lot of women would find that demeaning. Yes. And then, exactly. even if you, even if you can get that, then they want to say, well, she had been drinking. Well, even adults uh, often will have a uh, uh, a drink. Like even couples will have a drink before sex to relax a little. I'll tell a fast mm-hmm. side story. I worked with a, when I was an orderly back in the day in the seventies. I worked with a nurse, an RN named uh, Lola. She was a Filipina lady, and we staff got one of three weekends off. The nurses got one of two. Uh, they had a, uh, Her husband worked days and Monday to Friday, so they rarely had that much time together. It was good for raising their seven-year-old daughter, but not for anything else. And Lola and her husband had wanted to have another baby starting when the uh, daughter was around three and then that couldn't uh, coordinate schedules. And then when she was around five, so finally at age seven, they really wanted to get going on this kid. So uh, this was one of... Uh, uh, one of Lola's weekends off and she's walking out the door and we said to her, so what are you going to do this weekend, Lola? She said, get my husband drunk and start to work on that baby. And, uh, right. And so yeah. like, you know, it's yeah. yes. kind of what, it's kind of what people do. Yes. And it, it, is, it's it not, is what people yeah. do. Yeah, it, and there's yeah. nothing yeah. there's nothing wrong with it. The fact that feminists yeah. want to take it all away and criminalize it just shows that they actually do, at some level, want to ruin sex. They don't want to make it safer. Yes. They don't want to make it <laughs> yep. better for, for, for women yep. or anything like that. They're not interested in preventing sexual assaults because none of these things would apply anyway in, you know, in an actual case of sexual assault. Yep. Exactly. The, 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 you know, assailant is not going to care about any of that stuff. They just want to ruin everything. And, and, and the unwillingness to 
admit what is human nature, that yes, both men and women, but I would say especially women, use alcohol to give themselves permission to loosen up their inhibitions, to relax, to feel more amorous, you know, to, to shut off all the thoughts that go on in women's heads about whether their body is acceptable or not, you know, and all that kind of thing. Yep. That's what women do. And it's ridiculous. It also, of course, they completely allied the distinction between being nearly unconscious, which, of yep. course, an unconscious woman cannot consent. Nobody argues with that. Right. But, uh, you know, and having had two or three drinks, which you could be, you know, somewhat drunk, but still yep. perfectly know what you're doing and know what you decided at the beginning of the evening you were looking forward to doing, etc. And yet the yep. fact that all of that is now part of some kind of theory of male sexual abuse of women is so ridiculous. And it's terrifying that it's actually become part of criminal law. Yes, uh, and uh, just to go back and to affirm what you said about, uh, and what Tom said at the very beginning of the, the our show, that, that you know, to force um, some kind of standard where a woman has to, a man has to ask, is this okay? Can I do this? And then the woman has to say, yes, yes. It really, it just, it ruins it. it, it th yeah. That is not what most ordinary people do in a romantic encounter. It's not what the woman wants. I don't think it's what yeah. the man wants. It, uh, it's awkward. Yeah. It, like you said, it ruins the flow, the sense of, yes. Yeah. You know, everyone's romantic encounter, I think, is <laughs> my husband and I always laugh because in the, the lately, nearly every program we've watched, the man and woman, especially the first encounter, but not necessarily the first, they start kissing and it starts off, you know, it's really tender and, and kind of cautious. But then as the passion builds, yeah. you know, you're supposed to have this complete abandon that occurs. And so we, we have this thing, we laugh now. <laughs> they always start pulling off their clothes, you know, and so, yep. so both David and I, we always turn to one and go, ha, 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 because that's what it, you know, that's, and then they're just, you know, yep. they're just going wild and, and there's, there's no talking. And they're just yep. trying to get their clothes off as quickly as possible. And they're, they're clinging together and, and, you know, and it's, it's kind of silly in a way, but sometimes encounters are like that. Sometimes they're much slower than that, of course, but usually <laughs> they are wordless and yep. the wordlessness is actually, it's the sign of the passion. And it's also um, a, a part of it. it. It's like what helps you because yeah. this is supposed to be this, it's a different so. kind of encounter. It's not a conversation. Right. It's yes. an encounter with the person that uh, in an ideal sense, you're madly in love with and you're having this wordless, deeply passionate communion with the other person's body and ideally yep. with their, you know, their, their essence, their soul. Yep. And it's not, it's not about checking off a bunch of, you know, checklists and, and making sure that the other person, I mean, yeah, it's just so wrong. And uh, yes. it, it's, and so really what the feminists have done, they've, they've turned nearly every sexual encounter into a potential sexual assault if for some reason the woman decides that she wants to say it was, and the man has no possible recourse to it, it doesn't matter if they've had sex a hundred times before. Right. right. It, it doesn't matter that she texted him earlier that day to say she was looking forward to hot sex. It doesn't matter up, if up until the moment of penetration, she had seemed uh, you know, extremely enthusiastic about everything that was going on. It yeah. all of it can be deemed sexual assault under these new rules. Yes, crazy, in fact, crazy, crazy. I would go a little bit further. I would say that in law, pretty much any time a man and a woman have sex these days, he's a rapist. The mm -hmm. only issue is whether or not she complains. And most of the time they don't because it's a you know, mm -hmm. normal relationship or whatever. But I can't imagine that there's anybody who would, you know, especially a peop, uh, couples that have been together for a while. Are you still consenting? Are you still consenting? Are you still consenting? Are you still consenting? <laughs> it's like if you invited a girl to a movie and you went in and it's like, 
Do you still want to watch the movie? Do you still want to watch the movie? Do you still want to watch the movie? Do you still mm-hmm. want to watch the the uh, uh, the, the movie? movie? The, the only thing that would do is ruin the movie, exactly. right? That, yeah. That's all that would do. And yeah. I think, Janice, I very much take your point. It's so insightful. I think they're trying to destroy, well, for starters, sex between the sexes because uh, part of pair bonding, part of, you know, a couple having, well, becoming a couple and having warmth uh, for each other are the pair bonding hormones that get released um, during sex. As I understand it, interestingly, no surprise, the pair bonding hormones are a little stronger in men than they are in women. Probably has to do with the fact that we should risk ourselves for them and them them not for us, I would say. That's my guess. But um, so it does that. And then what it also does, of course, is make family formation almost impossible, at least a family that's going to produce babies. One of the questions I ask myself these days with the collapsed population um, uh, rates, uh, not not reaching a replacement value, uh, or rather a replacement rate, you know, the high abortion rate contributes. One of the things I ask myself, will this make a lot of babies? And like this mentality will make almost no babies, which is kind of where we're going. And I don't see how that is in society's interest. I don't see how it's in most women's interests, how it's in most men's interests, but that's exactly what they're trying to do. As you've pointed out, even first wave wave feminists wanted women to be sexually liberated, men to be sexually controlled, uh, wanted women to have the kids but not have to raise them, but the men pay for them, kind of hated the family. Uh, all the yeah. way back to uh, to f- first wave, and now all that's really happened is the, this wave of feminists, whatever we're on, has been successful at it. That's all that's mm-hmm. changed. Amen to that. Yeah, I know it's. Uh, yeah. You know, the whole Me Too thing was uh, incredible. That was the icing on the cake, really. Harvey. Yes. Harvey. Mm-hmm. You know, miss you, big guy. Harvey Weinstein accuser told him, I love you after alleged rape. Intimate emails reveal as lawyers try to blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. I mean, they yeah. got all kinds of things for him that should have exonerated him, you'd think, right? Yes. But that didn't matter. It just didn't matter. Well, there have been so many cases lately, and I, I don't think there has been a case that received a great deal of public attention and a lot of feminists, you know, jumping up and down saying, we believe her. And, you know, the, either this is a travesty of justice or at last here justice has been served and the sexual predator is being put behind bars. I can't think of a single case where there weren't serious doubts raised throughout yes. the course of the trial yes. about whether it, this was actually uh, you know cases of, of rape and sexual assault or not right. where right. where the woman uh you know hadn't suggested to the man pretty clearly that she wanted what he did to her and that even afterwards that she was happy that they had been sexual together and that she wanted more so this is where we're at now where men are going to trial And we over and over again see these cases where the woman has written to the man afterwards, telling him how much she loves him, saying that she wants to get together with him again, saying that she wants to be sexual with him again. In the case of the Harvey Weinstein trial, there were only, I mean, out of 100 women, I think, who have accused him of things, uh, only two were in that original trial who actually came forward as as complainants um, as the ones who whose uh, charges were uh, taken forward and uh, you know in, in both of the cases the, those women had had continuing seemingly loving consensual sexual affairs with Weinstein there was abundant evidence of that. They had written him. They had wanted to get together with him. They had not gone to the police. They had not complained to any friends or family about what had happened to them. In fact, they had done the opposite. They had talked about how much in love they were with Weinstein. These, I, I mean, I, I can't believe still that the man was, was convicted yeah. on that basis. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, the whole thing about the trial stank. They brought forward witnesses to supposedly um, corroborate a pattern of abuse, although there was no pattern in particular. And these were, I mean, it, it was just bizarre that a man was being tried on certain certain allegations, but then he was he might well have been convicted on the strength of witness testimony, but for crimes that weren't even, he, he wasn't even being prosecuted for so because the two that he was actually being prosecuted for weren't strong enough on their own. So they had to be bolstered with these others on the idea, I guess, that there's no smoke without some fire. Right. Uh, I, I just, I, I find it, you know, it, the, certainly the picture of, of women that emerges in the Weinstein case and many others that we could also talk about is of women who lie over and over again about their feelings, about their desires, about their assessments of the relationship. And yet we're supposed to believe them now, years later when they come forward and say that was assault. Yes. And, and we have forensic um, psychiatrists like Barbara Ziv, who was an expert witness in the Harvey Weinstein case, who say that there is no behavior on the woman's part that should discredit her. Because <laughs> even if she carries on a romantic relationship, even if she expresses love for her alleged rapist, even if she tells her friends that she's really happy with him and that he's a wonderful man, none of that should disqualify her claim that what happened to her was rape. Wow. Yeah. Crazy, yeah. right? My, I think mind bog. Go ahead, Don. No, please, you. I think we have a judiciary that's fearful. You know, they're afraid to go against the feminist brawn, you know? Probably the one with Weinstein, but there have been other cases, I think, where the judges look like, you know, they don't want to cross the feminists. They don't want to cross mm -hmm. this whole big group of, of women who would toast them, you know, if they said anything that was obviously true. You know? Yeah, I know. I mean, yeah. it really, it is the case that uh, we, we uh, just before we started this, we spoke about the Brock Turner case, which was widely reported as a slam dunk, you know, that it was a case where there was no question about what had occurred. Supposedly, Brock Turner, who was a young swimmer at Stanford University student, had gone to a party. He had taken a drunken girl there. He had dragged her outside of the frat house where they were partying and behind a dumpster. And that dumpster was mentioned over and over again. It became a kind of symbol for, you know, what a what a what a rat he was, how, how, how little respect he had for the woman right. behind a dumpster. Uh, he 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 assaulted a passed out girl. And, uh, you know, the, uh, in the end, of course, what happened is that he was. He was found guilty and uh, he was sentenced to six months in prison and uh, feminists were outraged. You know, it wasn't long enough. They, they eventually got up a recall petition and he was indeed recalled. He lost his job as a result of that ruling, be not because he didn't find the guy uh, guilty, but because he didn't give him enough time in prison. But the actual reality of that case was so different. Nobody had seen Brock Turner uh, taking this woman you know, when she was nearly unconscious outside. Everybody had seen her partying it up. Um, she seemed like she was in control of herself. Uh, nobody knows at what point she passed out. For anybody who's ever made love while they were sleepy or after they'd been drinking, right. you should honestly know that it is quite possible even with someone you love and you're having a good time, it's quite possible to fall asleep. Or if you've had a bit too much to drink, it's quite possible to pass out. It doesn't mean, and if the other person has been drinking, doesn't mean the other person has any kind of predatory intent. They might keep going, not realizing that. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was like, it was a such point. a questionable scenario. Yes. And uh, and yet this man was convicted and branded the worst kind of rapist. His life is ruined now. I mean, he'll never live this down. Uh, there are articles all over the place about what a terrible young fellow he was. And um, yeah, so so and and the the judge in that case, even though he 
went along, I, I think that was a case, Tom, where he knew yeah. that this was murky. Yeah. Yes. And but he, he didn't have it in him to acquit the fellow. So he just gave him six months thinking, I think he was going to be out in probably even less time than that. I mean, it's still a horrific thing. He was registered as a sex offender. It's a horrific yeah, yeah. thing for a young person, an innocent young person to, to have to endure. But yeah. I think he thought, you know, he would do that. That way he would protect himself from the feminists and give the minimum yeah. that he could get away with. But yes. it wasn't good enough because they're always out for blood and they know that they have legions behind them who aren't even interested in the details of the case, but will vote to have the judge recalled. So that's the, that's the standard that we've, we've come to. We've got judges who are terrified yes. of the feminist mob. Yes, exactly. Kind of the same thing happened in that Sam Fazio, was that her name, situation? Mm -hmm. True, yeah, but... This True, but before we move on, could I make a few Absolutely. comments on this? Thanks so much. Uh, the first thing that strikes me is having sex behind a dumpster, a guy and a gal. Next thing they'll be having us believe that girls are willing to have sex in toilets and girls' washrooms. I mean, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, uh, specifically, Re uh, Weinstein, another factor that's there is, of course, um, the fact that he could help make women a star. Yes. And much mm -hmm. like what I've seen in the workplace, there is some, what I would call true sexual harassment, like not joking around, not teasing, not a perhaps a blue joke, but actual harassment, but very little. What there is quite a bit of, I think, is women exploiting their sexuality. So mm -hmm. there's a balance, like it, at the very least, it's both. It's not just one. I go. think there's... And uh, if you look at Weinstein, who is kidding who? Well, there are many, many uh, females who would never exchange, you know, sex for a job or, or a grade. There's enough that there would be a lineup from Hollywood, California to Hoboken, New Jersey, if there was a chance to be a star to have sex with a man. Who's yeah. kidding who? I know. So, at, right? And, and that just gets washed away. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. One oh, other thing, or, 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 or maybe uh, two things that, uh, two more things that bother me. I had a buddy who was a criminal defense lawyer, and there was a husband and wife, and I think he must have been drying dishes because he started to flap her with the tea <laughs> towel. Yeah. And her, re her reaction was to call the police. Oh, now, he God. wasn't strangling her, her with it, you know, die, biatch, die. He was flapping her yeah. with it. Yeah. She has the presence of mind to call the police. They come, they arrest him, and they charge him with, wait for it, assault with a weapon to mm -hmm. wit a tea towel. Uh, Drop the towel, man. Don't make me blow you away. Uh, had to blow him away. He had a he had a towel. Uh, so she has the presence of mind to do that. But we're supposed to believe it takes women 20 years to process they've been raped. And they can have a bunch of sex with the same guy for, yeah. say, 10 of those years anyway. But let's even assume there's some woman like that out there. Well, the problem is, even if she could be believed, it's a bit of a so what, because it's also what she would do if she were lying. So that makes yes. it a tie. And yeah. you shouldn't, she shouldn't be able to convict on that, right? No, but I know. There you go. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it is. It's, it's just, it is extraordinary. The, the, this, this whole thing now of trauma theory that Barbara Ziv is an expert in and many other feminists are as well. And it, it's that idea that once you have been allegedly traumatized by your rape, then everything you do afterwards, even if it seems like the actions of a woman who hadn't been raped, becomes proof that you were raped. And so, yeah, it's just this perfect circle of feminist illogic whereby, yes, she carried on a, a loving sexual relationship with the man for years afterwards, but that proves she was traumatized because that's what traumatized victims do. Right. They try to normalize the right. thing that was done to them in order to deal with it psychologically and emotionally. So, yeah, it's perfect, isn't it? No matter yes. what you do, it becomes proof yeah. The trauma that itself is proof that a rape occurred. Really, I mean, if you exactly uh, have these terrible memories and they flow, oh, that's because you were raped. If you have no memories at all, oh, that's because you're raped. It's like yeah. it's like you go down the list. It's like you, yeah. you can't yeah. lose if you're a woman. It's like this. Yeah, the odds yeah. are stacked. 
You can't. And of course, <laughs> if she does raise a hue and cry, as they used to call it, and run immediately to the police, well, that's proof of rape too, right? And that's the mm-hmm. one that makes sense. So, but yeah. you know, right? So yeah, I know. Every, so we're at the stage of pretty much everything is rape, and everything is proof of rape. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Yeah. And I'll tell yeah. you, I've got to say one thing about, you know, when I was growing up, women were really able to say no. I, and I knew when they said no, and, and then I'd maybe try a little bit more, and then they'd say, stop it. Yeah. I'd stop it. Yep. And I, yep. all of my friends who I talked to, and these I had blue-collar friends, I had middle-class friends, I had upper-middle-class, all kinds of friends, all guys, we never thought of, what can I take from her? That was yeah. not the the middle stance. It yeah. was what will she give you? You know, that was the whole thing. What will she give you? So you're understanding that you are on the receiving end, and she has the power to say no. All of these young men, from from thirteen to twenty five that I remember, knew that. They knew that if she said no, okay, okay, back off, back off, and if they they'd give up after a while, they'd find somebody else or do whatever, but. I can't remember anybody who I think would would break that that uh, no. that strong no from a woman. And they women were really able to to say no, and and uh, they still are. I mean, as women get older, they still have this capacity to say no, very very strongly. So I, the whole thing is a hoax, as far as I'm concerned. That was exactly my experience, Tom. This whole thing that men are predatory, that, you know, normal men are predatory, mm-hmm. you know, some tiny percentage, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah exactly. sure. A man could use his strength to overpower yes. uh, any woman, but there's no thrill in that. The thrill is if she desires you. Yes. Like, that's the whole point. That's the male fantasy. Yes. Like, mm-hmm. you know, sort of, uh, you know, like what would be a good male fantasy? Um you knock on the door. You're supposed to go to a to a m- movie uh, w- 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 with your girl, and she answers the door nude and says, "I don't think I want to go to the movie tonight." But can you think of anything else we could do? Like, like, right? Like that's a male yeah. fantasy. Not mm-hmm. overpower her. Right. It's nothing. Right. It's, yeah. it's yeah. It's it's garbage. Wanting right. You. And, I know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and that's and that's what makes me. Well, it's one one of the things that makes me so angry about that whole feminist discourse is it is so deeply insulting. And I, you know, yes. since I started giving talks about these issues, I've had so many men write me and say exactly that. I, I, you know, that they have never wanted to overpower a woman. They've never right. wanted to have any sexual involvement with a woman who didn't want them. Right. It's not a turn on. Exactly. Sex yeah. is not about power. It's about intimacy. It's yes. about desire. And they said, you know, I've yeah. had discussions with many, many men. And every man knows where that line is. I mean, I'm not saying every man does. Obviously, there are some psychopaths around. Yeah. But, yes. but every normal man knows where that line is and doesn't want to cross it. And for feminists, that's absolutely you know, that, that, that's the exact opposite of the feminist perspective. And, and in a way, that was the thing that started me realizing how, how deeply dishonest feminism is, as well as how dangerous and damaging was, yeah, my own experience too, which was with, you know, a bunch of lower middle class, working class kids. And there, the guys were, gentlemanly they they were sure they were interested in having sensual pleasure but they were not interested at all in forcing anything yes yeah it'd be interesting to do a survey of women older women and ask them about that or maybe middle-aged women too just ask them have how much experience do you have in men being able to follow your direction when you say no yeah, would be. Would be really, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but I, I, I believe Tom. This is probably consistent with what you're saying. But please uh, do let me know if it's not. I uh, had to become something of a connoisseur of nose because back in the day, again, girls like wouldn't say yes. They thought mm-hmm. it was 
right. too sleazy. They would just go along if yes. they wanted something to happen. And they'd be, this was kind of rare, but you might get no's. Feminists would hate this. It clearly didn't uh, mean no. Right. Silly boy, stop. <laughs> stop. Right. Go, right. you silly boy, stop. You know, it was totally playful, right? Totally playful. Yeah. Then yeah. there were ones that was uh, the strong no, like, no, it was almost like, like you said, like, and if you pushed a little harder or like try it again, if she really meant no, you would get like, as you kind of did that roar of no, and you'd kind of, okay, okay, like I get the point. They, yep. Yeah, they would make it very clear. A lot of them were quite, n- 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 quite nice about rejecting you actually. Yes. Um, but, but if you, you know, went a little too far, they made it really clear what kind of no it was then they're the ones that were in the middle were something like no we shouldn't which kind of sounds like you know maybe there is some longing to but not quite sure i don't want you to think i'm easy or i don't want to get bra- right. bad reputation right. so it's try again later try harder maybe not tonight mm-hmm. you know maybe if we go on yeah. another date it was that kind of thing and you could kind of work your way through that but ironically I thought that you had to have a lot of sensitivity to women to figure yeah. out what kind of know it was. My mm-hmm. my hope was that they'd start to say yes if they meant yes. But at least when I was young, they never really did. Like <laughs> once you're in a like once you're in a relationship, so you're there like trying to figure out what kind of know is this because there were three different <laughs> kinds. And, right? No. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think that was the thing that um, Warren Farrell got in trouble for back in 2012. They found a statement in some book he'd written. He was going to give a talk at the University of Toronto on the boy crisis. But some feminist teachers found a statement he'd made in some 1977 book, I think, where he talked about the the vagueness of no and all the you know ambiguities and the layers of meaning that it might contain and and that was the point and that was somehow being a rape apologist but he made that yeah. point that yes yeah, sometimes no means I'm not sure sometimes no means I want you to try a lot harder and make me feel really special right. exactly. sometimes no means I want you to tell me you love me and this yes. is meaningful to you and then I'm not just one in a line and I could relate to that right. I, I didn't I never wanted to be just you know one in a line I wanted to be special yeah. and yep. that's what no often means it's a way of testing whether the guy you're with is really into you or just into sex with anybody. Right. And, yeah. and, you know, and I think a lot of now what we're seeing as claims that the woman didn't consent is actually a code for wounded uh, self-love yeah. Or, or, yeah. Or, or just woundedness where a woman yeah. has had sex with a man, it was consensual and then she realizes afterwards that she was just one in a line. And then it becomes a claim of sexual assault. And so, for instance, in Canada, there was that, that case of, well, there was the famous Gian Gameshi case. And then there was also the Mandy Gray rape case. And uh, in the Mandy Gray case, it seemed really, really clear that she felt bad afterwards. And I felt for her in a way Uh, She was involved with a man who was, they were both graduate students at the University of York. And they weren't young by any means. They were in their mid to late twenties. And uh, he, but he already had a girlfriend and he'd made it pretty clear to Mandy that that was an open relationship, but he was committed to this girlfriend who lived in a different city, I think. And, And so she was his, you know, his thing on the side. And that's, I I would never encourage any woman to be involved in that kind of a relationship because it's a recipe for real hurt feelings and feeling terrible about yourself. And I think that's what happened. And she, uh, you know, this is a famous case of a man who was convicted after his girlfriend sent him a text saying she was out with a bunch of friends and they were drinking. Why didn't he come and join them? And then they'd have hot sex later that night. So he did eventually join them. They went back to his place. They had sex. And then she said that she hadn't consented. And uh, and initially he was convicted for that because he had not, you know, received affirmative consent. And ultimately the, the, his conviction was overturned, 
But um, it was pretty clear, like she texted the next morning to a friend saying, I didn't say, I didn't not, I didn't consent, but I didn't not consent. Oh, boy. And she also texted to the friend saying, why do I always get involved with psychopaths? <laughs> and what she was clearly saying, and it was really interesting. She didn't say, I, you know, why did I get involved with a psychopath? It's why do I always get involved with, in other words, men who abuse me and who don't really love me. And the woman, the friend who she was texting with, texted back and didn't say, oh, my God, you've been raped. Go to the police right away. The, the friend knew what was going on. She said, yes, you shouldn't get involved. You should, you're on a dangerous path. You're on a bad path. It's a dark path. You shouldn't do this to yourself. And so it was clear this was a case where Mandy was feeling terrible about herself because she was involved with a man who didn't love her. And that turned into a rape charge and the guy's initial conviction and the, you know, imperiling of his freedom and, and everything else because she felt bad about it. And I felt sympathetic with her, but I didn't feel sympathetic with her willingness to go through with, with the, the rape charge. I mean, that, that's outrageous. And I think so many of these cases, in the case of, of Gomeshi, those three women who all lied and all about their involvement with uh, the CBC media darling, um, that it was clear that 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 hurt feelings and a sense that they had been used by somebody who didn't really love them was motivating these women. They felt jilted. They felt that they'd been, you know, wrongly treated. It wasn't sexual assault. Clearly, they had all of them had made that clear. That one had sent him a picture of herself in a bikini a year later. Uh, one went on to have a sexual relationship with him. Another sent him flowers and said what a wonderful time she'd had and how she wanted to see him again. They felt jilted, and so they had him charged years later with with all these counts of sexual assault and and so yeah it's it's strange that often it seems to me consent has become a kind of way of talking about women feeling used and bad about themselves oh boy exactly and if i might tie it into again that that little theory i developed instead of saying oh god i feel like a slut i'm not going to do that again yeah uh, mm -hmm. th they can change out that bit of responsibility to uh, that they should be taking to, okay, I did what I did, but I'm not going to be that way in the future. It doesn't work for me. They can transform that responsibility into a right, not only to feel raped, but to get the guy convicted or at least drag him through hell, drag him through seven kinds of hell. So it's, that, again, that classic feminist thing of uh, responsibilities for men and rights for 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 women no matter how yes. absurd the application of the concepts yeah. yes if you're mm -hmm. held blameless you're never going to find what you need to change yeah exactly i keep attracting sociopaths okay yeah. what's that about honey let's have a look yes. at that why are you doing that i mean there's probably yeah. some very good reasons and if you only hold her blameless she's yeah. never going to find out what she's doing she's going to attract more you know yeah uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's, it, it's a real mess in that it's sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, and oh, I was just going to say sorry. Sorry, I wasn't going to say anything very important. I was just going to say that <laughs> that um, yeah, it, it, like not. We don't want to get into the. I'm not interested in that. Women are most harmed by this thing, but but yeah, you know, women are harmed by 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 the refusal to hold them morally yes, accountable. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Harmed in a whole bunch of ways. They feel lousy about themselves. They yeah. attract more of the same guys. And as we're now starting to understand, at least as I understand it, doesn't take very much, very, very many casual sex partners uh, for uh, women to start to lose the ability to pair bond long term. So how horrible is that for them huh. and for uh, for everybody else? Yeah, there's been some stuff on that, Tom. Like, I'm not the psychologist, but Stefan uh, Molyneux and uh, Lauren Southern uh, did one that said something like, I think there's a uh, a number of studies that don't 
line up perfectly, but they're uh, the most extreme one they found that they talked about that with every partner behind beyond one that a female had, her ability to have a successful long term pair bonding was impaired, so that by the time she had eight, she would which isn't even double digits, so I don't even that used to be a big number that wouldn't be a big number now, I don't think she has something like um an eighty percent chance of having a divorce even if she does marry. Mm. Yeah, guys apparently, uh, and I guess it's that whole thing, probably I'm going to guess has something to do with the fact that they're the ones that are penetrated, are, are female friends, that they kind of burn hot. And then if there's too many guys, uh, sort of the attachment element sort of burns out. And huh. then it stops. It stops to work. That's so, uh, if if that has like any truth at all, then uh, then uh, there's real long term harm to women and to the the poor schnook that yeah. that uh, that yeah. marries her and, and would like to have a family together. Yeah, there uh, harms men and families. You know. Yeah. There yeah, exactly. And there is also that thing. I mean, I've had um, a girlfriend or two say to me um just take me and um <laughs> the the yeah. thrill in that isn't again it's not that you could overpower them it's the desire they have for you and the trust right and the trust and um so a, uh, as we've moved away from like you literally couldn't do that now without being raped because you're not getting further consent right. you're kind of peeling off her clothes you're bending exactly. her over you're doing whatever but it's kind of hot kind of fairly commanding stuff let's say um as women can get less of that with a guy they love or trust they seem to be um going a little bit crazier in other respects you've seen, uh, 50 shades of gray apparently uh uh the sing uh f- females watch way more violent porn than men no, do as a percentage basis. <laughs> that violent porn, it's not a majority of the porn that 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 uh, women watch, but I think some study says it tends to have the largest single groups of viewerships. So as they can't get can't get a reasonable amount of like intense masculinity in the real world, they seem to be going crazier in the fantasy world. But the next problem is, I don't think it stays there. I think that's what happened when they go to bars and maybe, you know, some really rough, like a biker or something, will pick them up, you know, to get, I think they're putting themselves at risk of getting an an experience that they don't want. A guy that they don't say, just take me to, takes them. Because they can't get that in their real life in a loving, passionate yes. uh, context anymore. So, like at that point, like I'm really worried for them. Like they could end up with a really bad actual rape. Mm-hmm. I'm really scared on their behalf in that regard. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know the other thing. This whole thing just decimates is. That whole scenario, when you first connect with a woman and she connects with you, and that first kiss, this this affirmation of self, oh, she likes me, oh, I yes. like her, oh, he loves me. You know, there's this affirmation that happens that's just so powerful in people. And then that can move on, you know, as, as after that kiss, then something, you grab her, you hold her, she holds you. Yeah. You know, it's this whole thing, this dance that's so beautiful that people feel affirmed by it. And this mm-hmm. whole thing is just this consent stuff. It's just blasting that yeah. out. You can't have yeah. it anymore. It's just gone. No. You know, yeah. it's a beautiful thing that gets ruined. Yeah. Uh. And, I th- and I think to come back to Janice's point, I think that's actually the goal. Like a lot of relatively uh, yes. n- 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 uh, normal women don't realize that or want that. But I think the feminist leaders do and then there's the whole thing too of the one-way street i was trying to think (laughs) and i don't think that any girls trying to recall yes i'm also trying to think uh, um, (laughs) uh, i don't think any girlfriend i ever had has ever even once asked me if she could touch me in some intimate way right she just did it 
Right. And like that, and that's <laughs> part of the intimacy. But like, like what a double standard, though, right? Yeah. Like, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've been experiencing that before. It's yeah. like, oh, you're getting a BJ. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> you're getting it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah, the double standards. Of, and, and, you know, perfectly acceptable in a movement that claims it's interested in gender equality. Right, the exactly. Is, Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. You know, it yeah. strikes me how subtle they've moved this. How subtly they've moved the responsibility, Janice, what you first said when we started this. The responsibility has been shifted over to the man yeah. you know, very mm -hmm. slowly and very subtly. And and now we're to yeah. the point where, you know, she's got no blame and he's got all of yeah. it. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. Well, well that's yeah. exactly it. So, like, um, I'm, I'm sure we're on the same page when you mean shift the responsibility. You mean shift 100% of the responsibility, yes. right? Yeah. So exactly. he's only got responsibilities and yeah. she's, she's only, only got, got rights yeah that's yeah it, Don. i know that's it's, exactly a, it's right. extraordinary that's exactly right feminism ruin, ruins everything <laughs> yes yes it does, it does. it's amazing mm -hmm. it's just amazing and the sad part is that people buy it you know yeah judges yeah. legislators police yes Ugh. yes yeah hey, and, watch this yeah. video yes <laughs> Are we about finished? Yeah, I think Any so. Any last points to be made so. before we stop? I don't think so. I think we've pretty much uh, covered them all. Yeah, yeah, it's been a good discussion. I've really enjoyed it. Me too. Really enjoyed me too, Honestly. she says. Oh, <laughs> yes, God. yeah. Yeah. yeah Indeed. Oh, yeah, it's so great to have um, have people to discuss this with because like, there's, there's not many of us. About the only good news is, is once you see this stuff, you don't unsee it, it seems to me. Very that's few exactly people right. come our way and then go back. That's like, right, very, no, very few. True. I think that's exactly mm -hmm. right. Good. So make sure you go see Janice on Fiamingo File 2.0. Come see me at my new local site, menaregood.locals.com. And uh, come and see us for the next one. So we'll see where we go. And okay. as always, men... Are good, and so is Janice because she's an honor because she's an honorary guy. She what really a is. Great way to finish. You all take care. We'll see you next time. Minute take girls. care. Okay. Men are good, as are you. <laughs>